And this is the Remarkable. And it's a product that I've been really interested in for quite some time. I've wanted one for quite some time, but the price wasn't really right. If you look back at the reviews of this product from like 2016, 2017, they're all saying the same thing, okay, like this is a really interesting product to try and replace paper, but at 600 pounds, really is that really worth it when you consider what else you can get for 600 pounds the quality of like ipad you get for 600 pounds for example is this really worth it but i've done a lot of research and i think honestly this is the most compelling one this is the remarkable one and they've just released a remarkable two and some of the things that people weren't so sure about was like the software for example and in designing the remarkable two it seems like they've solved a lot of those software issues so I've done a lot of research and this seems the most compelling note-taking e-reader that there is. It's low on like processing power and it's low on things it can do. It's low on features, but that makes it low on distractions and that's quite important. It's really just there to replace paper. And paper doesn't have a lot of features, but it's been really, really useful. All right, let's get it unboxed. That is really, really light. It's a bit smaller than I thought it was, to be fair. We designed Remarkable to not get in your brain's way and to help you think. And see the way this type of screen works, it's consuming no power because it's an e-ink display. So currently, the screen says something, but it's not consuming any power. It's essentially an e-reader screen like a Kindle screen, but it is also a tablet. What else do you get in the box? A remarkable marker. That's a satisfying thing. That's quite impressive. Having paid like 300 quid for this, you wonder is it going to live up to what you expect and what it looks like. And yeah, it is pretty remarkable. It is. That's the tilt function, pressure levels. Yeah, okay, I'm impressed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it set up and I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it to replace my teacher planner, essentially. That is the aim of this thing. It's gonna replace a lot of paper for me. Uh, what else you get? You get some free marker tips and a cable for charging and for data transfer. Quick start guide, which I'll look through. Little case, that's very nicely packaged. This thing, this is the folio. I went for the slight upgrade. This is the kind of blue wool thing. Yeah, the aim of this is to improve paper, not to actually be something completely different, but to be better paper. I think it's a really interesting world of products that are coming up just now. I'll come back to you after I've tried it out a bit. <laughs> So I've been using it for a couple of days now and I'm pretty impressed. This thing, it really knows how to do one thing and do it well. It's a kind of hedgehog in that way. There's no distractions, there's no email, there's no notifications. It's just aiming to replace paper. And as long as it does that well, I feel really positive about it. What I really wanted it to do was to replace this kind of big folio of paper that I've been carrying around with me for the last couple of years. <laughs> And in that pack of paper, although there's some useful documents I will still need to be carrying around, there's some things, some marking I've got to do, there's some important documents that I need to get turned around and signed and sent to people. What I also have is my weekly planner, which is like a fortnight's worth of paper, and it just involves a whole lot of me folding it, unfolding it, finding the day and thinking about what the plan is. I've never liked carrying around one of those big bulky planners, and now I have something that can have every day of the year and in this small package. 
Some of the complaints that some people had was about the companion app, but I find it pretty good. I mean, there's an app for Windows, there's an app for Mac, there's an app for Android and iOS, and you know, it's just really, really simple to drag something in and it updates. You can see on that companion app, you can see every single document that you've got live on here with your live updates of your pen annotations. So I find that really easy to use and I find that really useful. Because if I make a note on this, then I can see that at any point on my phone or on my computer as well. I did have a problem with the stylus when I first unboxed it and straight after that unboxing video I was like oh my word it doesn't work what a load of rubbish and what it was doing was whenever my pen was near the screen it was actually writing so there was this issue where I didn't have to press on the screen to actually write something but um, I, I could use it with the pencil it worked okay with the pencil mode but it didn't work with any of the other ones because it just left a pen mark on it but I could use it with the pencil, so I started using it anyway, and gradually the, the problem kind of disappeared. However, it keeps coming back. So I did write to Remarkable, and the customer service was really good. They got back to me within a day, and they've already sent me, and it's already arrived, a new stylus. So hopefully that one won't have the same problem. So the point is that I could replace all of that paper, and because I am a digital native and because I'm used to using computing, I'm really quite good at keeping folder structures together. And I know how to keep my work nice and neat and tidy in a digital folder structure. However, my desk is really untidy because I'm not very good at organizing paper. So for me, I'm gonna find this really, really useful. It can basically keep any notes from meetings, my weekly planner, it can keep all of those things just together for me and well organized. One of the issues I always have is that I make notes on paper and I leave them around and I know that I want to see them again in the future, but I don't know when. So they end up being kept in like piles on my desk and it just gets really, really messy. But here I can keep those things. I know that they're in here somewhere and I can keep them well organized and I can find them anytime. So it's really useful for me. If you like a paper planner and you're used to using it and you are really well organized with paper, then maybe it isn't the solution for you because it does introduce another digital item, something else that you need to charge, something else that you need to learn to use into your life. But I find it fantastic. I'm really enjoying using it. I'm gonna do another little update on this video just after a few more days, maybe a week of using it. And I'm gonna just find out one thing because the thing that could be a deal breaker is the battery life. Now at the minute, it's Monday, it's the end of the day on Monday and I'm on 74%. I was really hoping that I'd have to charge this once per week. Now this is the Remarkable 1, the Remarkable 2, I know they've kind of addressed this and the battery life is a lot better. I'm gonna see how that goes because I certainly don't want something that I have to charge every single night. It's not looking like it's gonna be like that, but every two or three days, that might be a little bit too much. I want something really that I can charge at the weekend and it will just last me in my bag throughout the week and just be like a paper planner. So I'll let you know how that one goes. That's gonna be the deal breaker. If the battery life isn't up to that, it doesn't have to maybe last a full week, but I don't wanna to have to charge it every single day. <laughs>
all times. I've been constantly making notes on it, flipping between pages, so I've been using it quite heavily in those three days. So I'm going to need to charge it at the start of the week and in the middle of the week. And I think that's okay, it's not perfect, I really wanted it to work through the week. But depending on use, you might actually get that sort of battery life out of an iPad. If you didn't do lots of CPU intensive tasks on your iPad, you probably would get that kind of battery life out of it as well. And I found that the battery for the iPad Pro is actually really quite good and lasts quite a long time with just kind of light use, but even watching videos on it. So my final thoughts on using this is it depends what you have and it depends what you need. If you already have quite a lot of devices that do things like watch videos, browse the web, then maybe this is a compelling thing. If you're a user of you know, a large screen phone, then you're probably quite used to already consuming videos and reading the web on your phone. Then actually having something like this alongside it makes kind of a lot more sense than maybe having just something that's a tablet that's a little bit bigger than this phone. You know, this is never gonna replace a laptop or a tablet, so if you have a laptop that's kind of small and light as well, then this could maybe go in between your phone and the laptop. And actually I found it really good as using alongside my work laptop so I didn't have to have notes maybe on Outlook or something like that. So I think if you already have other things and you use them and you're happy with them, then I kind of would recommend this to you because it does fit in somewhere where none of the others do. And if you're interested in having an e-reader, well, this is a nice large one. It's A5, it's half A4 size. It's a nice big size, it's nice and light, and it's a pleasure to read on, really. Certainly, perhaps, if you wanted it as a personal thing for you to make notes, for you to work on, to replace your notebooks, to replace a lot of paper in your life, I think it is a really convincing buy. And if you wanted something that was an e-reader as well, provided you were happy with kind of public domain EPUBs, I certainly am, I've got the complete Shakespeare on here already. As long as all you wanted to read was public domain EPUBs or downloads from places like Smashwords and you didn't need a Kindle app on it to read your Kindle books, then I think there's a really convincing e-reader as well. And this, I think, is the difficulty right now because there's so many different devices. When the first iPad came out, there was only really, you know, you could have a laptop, an iPad. The phone didn't do everything it does now when the first iPad came out, and you'd maybe have a desktop computer as well. But now there's so many different sized devices. You can have a very small phone, a medium sized, large phone, small tablet, medium, large tablet, tiny laptop, <laughs> through to huge laptops through to really powerful desktop machines. So there's this vast array of things and you don't need something in every single category. You need maybe three different devices. So if you have a large phone, do you really need a tablet? If you have a large tablet like an iPad, do you really need a laptop? And if you have a laptop, do you really need a desktop? Well, you probably need something to do the very mobile, the ultra portable, the phone, something in the middle like an iPad or a laptop. And perhaps if you do need powerful computing, then you might need a desktop. But that's an interesting thing, maybe this can come in between your phone and your laptop, or your phone and your desktop. I do really like this as a device, but I think it's really niche. It certainly isn't for taking notes and sharing them with other people. It does have that writing to text feature, but that, in my experience, hasn't been accurate enough to make it worth doing, and I can certainly type faster than I can write accurately on this and then go through and do all the corrections. So I'm not really thinking this is something that I'm going to write on to share with other people. But for personal note-taking, this is excellent. Writing on it and then getting the PDF, you can email a PDF to yourself or you can get it through the Remarkable app on your phone. Actually, that's a really nice experience. So you could do things like marking up essays maybe, maybe some, somebody sends you an essay in PDF form, you could actually mark it up on here, write your notes in the margin and send it back to them really easily. But it's not for making like beautiful notes. On the iPad with Apple Pencil you can make really attractive notes and you've got this full colour and you can share those, you can screen record, all of those different things. This isn't going to do that for you. This is about you taking personal notes, maybe sharing just your writing with one other person, but it isn't for producing really attractive notes for mass consumption. So my final thoughts, my conclusion really is, I really like this, but you need to know that it's right for you if you're going to buy it. I hope you like this review. Let me know if you're interested in more things like this. I'll be back with a bit more of a feature rundown of everything you can do on it. I would really like to try the Remarkable 2, so Remarkable if you watch this, send me a Remarkable 2 to try. And um, I know that what they've worked on is the battery life, and I know they've worked on the pen latency a little bit, although I found that really good. And they've generally sped up the device a little bit with a bit better processor, a bit more storage, and also some features like magnetic clipping of the pen and clipping into folios. So it's, it seems like a bit more of a mature device. Although, if you do opt for this, the first version, you can be sure you're getting value for money, you're getting a really nice device, 
well built and I'm really pleased with it.